Hi everyone, I am really excited that we've released FreeDOS 1.3 Release Candidate 5 this week. Uh, this version has a ton of package updates, including an updated uh, kernel and Freecom. And this release also has a return of networking. The previous release candidate didn't have networking in because I'd asked for that one to be held due to some questions around licensing, but we've added it back for RC5. Uh, I'm running the QEMU virtual machine here, and I don't usually set that up for networking, which is why you're seeing this message on the screen, but maybe I'll do network setup in a future video. Uh, for now, I just wanted to show you a few things you can do in FreeDOS 1.3 RC5. Uh, so I just installed FreeDOS as a full install with all the applications and games. And if I do a directory here, you can see the directories that get set up. And you can see we've organized things a bit in this release. There's a, a bunch of programs installed, but we try to keep them organized. Uh, you can see the applications are in apps, the games are in games, the utilities are in util, the networking is in net, and a few other programs have their own top-level directories like the Blosec Editor and the Program Manager Attorney Program uh, uh, Menu Program. Uh, but let's go into the games directory and see what's in there. So let's go into games. And I'm going to do a wide directory because I know there's a lot in there. And so you can see I've included a lot of different uh, games. Uh, I, won't do a, I won't do a demo of everything now, but I'll probably do videos on some of these later on. Uh, for now, let's take a peek at a few really interesting ones. Uh, let's go into Paku Paku. And directory. And so I'm just going to run the program Paku. So the Paku Paku game is basically a Pac-Man game. Uh, so by the way, why all the focus on games? Well, it's because there's a lot of classic DOS games that you can download and play on FreeDOS, but it's nice to have some open source games that you can play too. And we've included a bunch of fun games that you can try, and they're from all sorts of genres. But as I said, this Paku Paku, let's go ahead and uh, play it just to kind of see what it's like. And yeah, this is basic Pac-Man. If you are familiar with the Pac-Man arcade game, uh, this is pretty much it. Um, I don't want to get too distracted here, but uh, maybe I can finish the board real quick. And here we go. I played Pac-Man a ton in the arcade games, uh, in the arcade when I was uh, growing up and uh, always a fun game to play, so it was great to see this in uh, FreeDOS as well. Not really going to score, I just want to kind of clear the board. All right, and let's go down. As I said, not going for a high score. Just wanted to clear the board, just so we can kind of see what it looks like. So anyway, that's uh, Paku Paku an exit of the game here. Um, yeah, so that's a that's a fun game. Uh, let's go look at another one. So let's back up one directory, and let's go to the Sinet directory. So this is the Sinet game. Uh, you might remember this game from the programming video series I did last year. It's a version of the classic ancient Egyptian board game, Sinet. The actual rules for Sinet have been lost to history, but there's some evidence that people have been able to recreate the rules of Sinet. Uh, basically, you got these throwicks in the bottom right-hand corner, and the number of sides that are showing is basically the number of, of spaces that you can move. Uh, and this is a, a simple version of Sinet that I like to play. Uh, you, uh, you play by going in sort of a backwards S configuration. So you can see my uh, I've got the upper left hand corner highlighted and so if I just move off to the right you can see that uh, we're going to move off uh, in this direction and then when we get to the end we're going to go down and we're going to go backwards. So it's that backwards S configuration and then we get to this end and we go down and we go to the right. And all of your pieces uh, are going to move according to those throwing sticks and you have to uh, stop on this square here with the line. You have to stop there uh, on an exact throw. And then from there, walk to special squares on to the right. So if you move to this one over here, uh, this is actually a trap square. So if you fall in this one, uh, you actually get revived up on this square here. 
uh, and then the other ones after that. Uh, on this square, you have to throw exactly a three to get off. Over here, you have to throw exactly a two to get off. And over here, you have to throw a one to get off. So I've got uh, a move of two. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move uh, this piece right here. We'll move it off uh, two squares. That means it's going to go over here and then here. So we're going to end up uh, basically jumping that, uh, that filled in face piece. And uh, now we're going to be as the, uh, the filled in face uh, player. And so we're going to move on square. And so we can move this piece over by one. And then we can move uh, now the empty face piece. And so we'll just pick this piece in front and move that one three spaces. Uh, and this is going to go actually over there. So I'll just hit space on that one. And you can kind of see how the game is played, right? So uh, you can capture other pieces well. Um, and uh, like I'll just move this uh, player here by, uh, by two squares. And that'll swap spaces with this filled in face piece. And if you have a zero on your move, then you lose a turn on that one, and the next player gets to go again. So uh, anyway, this is just a simple version of the Sinet game. So if you uh, uh, like playing board games, you might give that uh, game a try. I'll go ahead and exit. And as I said, if you want to see how this program was written, uh, I covered that in the programming video series from last year. Uh, and let's do one other game. Let's back up one directory. And let's go into the Zemi directory. And let's run Zemi. And this is a version of the classic snake game. Uh, you probably know the rules for this one, right? You eat each one of these numbers and uh, you grow your snake. Uh, don't run into yourself. Don't run into the edges of the board. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty straightforward game, a uh, fun game. Let's get that little number there. Uh, and uh, there was a version of this uh, for MS-DOS. Uh, it was important, I think, to have a copy of this or a version of this on FreeDOS as well. We actually have another version of uh, sort of the snake game called Nibbles uh, that I'll show in video here. Let me just run into the wall so I can exit this as a quick demo. Anyway, that one's a, a pretty fun game. Uh, but let's take a look at some of the apps. So let's back up to the root directory and go into apps. So as I said, I'll probably do uh, some videos on those games later on to show them off. But uh, for now, I wanted to show the other applications that we include in FreeDOS 1.3 RC5. Uh, there's more programs than this on the bonus CD, but let's just take a look at a couple of the, uh, I think, interesting ones you might try out. Uh, the first one is a file manager. So we're going to go into DN2, and we're going to run uh, DN. And so this is dot navigator 2. You're probably familiar with a canonical file manager called the canonical file manager on DOS. And there were a lot of those on uh, DOS. Uh, and as I said, this is DOS navigator 2. And it's a real file manager. I think I did a video on this one somewhere else. But I'll just mention you can do a bunch of stuff uh, with this file manager. You can use the, uh, the mouse over here to navigate around. You can activate uh, the menus and uh, do different tasks over here. Uh, or you can also use the uh, the keyboard, uh, and on the bottom of the screen, you probably saw that uh, there's uh, different. Uh, can use hotkeys. You can use F keys uh, to do various uh, functions. As I said, I, I covered this in another video, so I'm not going to go into too depth, uh, too much depth on this one here. Let's go ahead and exit and look at one of their applications. Now, if you want to edit files. Uh, like maybe you're a programmer, we have a bunch of editors that you can use. Maybe you're familiar with, uh, for example, the VI editor on Linux or Unix systems, and we have a couple of versions of VI. We have uh, Elvis, uh, we have uh, Vim. Uh, let's, let's look at Vim real quick. So let's go into the Vim directory, and we'll just run uh, Vim. This is the VI improved editor, and it's this is basically the same version of Vim that you might run on a Linux system. So if you're familiar with VI and the VI commands, I think you should feel right at home here. As I said, we also have a, another version of this called Elvis, uh, which is another version of VI. So if you want to use, um, uh, if you want to use uh, 
uh, VI We've got a few options for you to try. There's also a version of Emacs, so we want to keep the uh, VI and Emacs war alive. So uh, there's another version of Emacs called Freemax, and that is a great Emacs uh, version as well for DOS. But my favorite programming editor, at least on DOS, is the Fed editor. So let's go into the Fed directory, and we'll run Fed. So uh, this is a, uh, a really great editor. Uh, whenever I do programming on FreeDOS, I, I like to use Fed. And so you've probably seen me uh, use Fed on uh, uh, programming videos. In fact, let me go ahead and uh, let me quit this real quick and do Fed on, we'll just do file.c. So it's, you can see a, a C program in the Fed editor. Uh, the reason I like Fed is because it does syntax highlighting. It can do all kinds of preferences as well. So I will do an include standard io.h, uh, int main, and then uh, the program here would be, let's just say, uh, put s hello world. And uh, there's lots of ways that you can use uh, uh, the Fed editor. Say, I just really like this because uh, it's it's a great way for programming. Uh, in my programming video series, I'm, I'm always using Fed, but I'm actually using a different color scheme than the default that you're seeing on here. Let's go ahead and uh, just quit out of this. I don't need to save those changes. Uh, we also, by the way, have a bunch of compilers. And so let's take a look quick at what you can do in uh, in FreeDOS, so we uh, not everything is installed by default, and so you're going to have to uh, run some or install some of these programs yourself. And we have a program FD Impulse that you can use to install other programs. FD Impulse is the FreeDOS installer, my package list editor software, and you can see just by getting with the keyboard uh, over here under applications. These are different applications that are installed. By default, we don't install FD2E by default because there's a name conflict. Uh, archivers, so we include a number of very popular archive programs in here. And if you uh, want another one in here that we don't include by default, you can easily install that just by uh, hitting space on one of these to put an X next to it. And then when you exit the program, it installs it. Uh, if you remove an X, then it will remove that program as well. I've I've uh, demoed FD Impulse in another video as well. Uh, and so you can just go through this and uh, see what programs got installed and which ones didn't. Uh, over here under development, you can see uh, these are various computers and tools that we include on the live CD. Again, if you go to the bonus CD, there's a ton of other compilers there as well, including the uh, GCC compiler and the IA16 uh, version of GCC. Uh, so there's lots of different ways. If you are a programmer, developer, you want to uh, write your own programs, we include those uh, there for you as well. Uh, and you can see all the different programs on the left-hand side in groups, and then all you need to do is just do a, a right arrow, and it brings you over to the list of other programs on the right-hand pane. Anyway, there's a lot in there, and I just uh, I don't want to list all of them on utilities because we have a ton of utilities. Uh, but I do want to show one other program here, and that is Program Manager Eternity. And so I'm just going to run PGM. Here is Program Manager Eternity. So if you prefer to use a menu program on DOS, this is a good one to try. PGME does programming launching for you, and it makes it really easy to use. Uh, for example, let me go into, you just use the mouse, and uh, let me go ahead and uh, uh, launch the FreeDOS shell over here. So this is the FreeDOS shell. It's a simple file manager, kind of like the DOS shell file manager from MS-DOS. So if you like that file manager, you might try the DOS shell. As I said, very simple uh, program. Uh, you can see the different options, the different ways to view, uh, things like that. So uh, I'll just sort of exit out of this. It's sort of a quick little demo of the, uh, the FreeDOS shell. Uh, and of course, other programs in here as well. The standard help system on FreeDOS is TML help. Uh, let me go ahead and launch that one. And so here's HTML help. Uh, everything is linked on here. So you can just need with the arrow keys or with tab to go between the different links. And uh, uh, 
there are several folks in FreeDOS who do amazing work keeping everything documented. I really have to hand it to them. There's great work on uh, on F, uh, on uh, the HTML help and all the documentation you can find in here. I mean, you can see on the scroll bar on the right-hand side, much more stuff is on this page. There's just a ton of stuff in HTML help. Uh, let me exit out of this. And uh, let me also show you another per We have a new help system in the works and that's called AMB help. And so this is AMB help. It's built on the AMB book reader. AMB stands for the ancient Dean book. And we've covered that, uh, I think in another video, it's a really simple and sleek reader that works really well as a help system. So this is an upcoming uh, feature to look for. So again, uh, I'm just going to use tab and that allows me to jump between these different options. Uh, or if I wanted to, I could also uh, use the arrow keys to move around as well. Uh, all you need to do is uh, is just uh, hit return on one of these, it's just like HTML help, and it brings me into the detailed uh, help on that program. Uh, so anyway, it's just a really sleek, as I said, uh, reader, uh, and that's probably an upcoming uh, feature that you might look for in a, uh, a future version of FreeDOS, maybe when we do the version of 1.3. Anyway, I just wanted to show off a few things in, uh, let me exit this, I just wanted to show off a few things you can do in FreeDOS 1.3 RC5. Some follow-up videos soon, so look to uh, look for that to see some of the other programs and the games that we include in FreeDOS 1.3 RC5. Uh, so look for that coming up soon. What do you think of this video? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Before I go, I have to thank everybody on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. I appreciate every one of you. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level to recognize you, especially here for that. So thank you again. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and consider supporting me on Patreon.